In today's video we will reveal how Raffaella Circoli fooled Penn and Teller with an extremely creepy and mind-bending performance. We will break the entire routine down and discuss each phase step by step. Let's do a quick rewind of what happened in the performance. Raffaella Circoli invited a randomly selected member from the studio audience to join him for his performance. He then gave simple instructions to the spectator that whichever side he feels like he's being touched, he should raise his hand accordingly. He then handed over a pair of earplugs to the spectator and asked him to push them deep inside his ear. He then introduced two masks. Then put one mask on the spectator's face while he wore the other one himself. He then started to move around the spectator and magically without touching the spectator, he made him raise his arms according to whichever side the spectator felt Raffaella touch his body. He continued to do this several times throughout the performance. He then asked the spectator to take a seat and to not remove his mask. He then took off his own mask and placed it onto the puppet that was sitting on a chair the entire time. He then took his performance to another level with what he was about to do with the puppet. He raised the puppet's left arm and magically, without even getting close to the spectator, the spectator raised his left arm as well. Raffaella then inserted his right hand inside the puppet's right glove and raised one finger and amazingly the spectator did the exact same thing. He then made the spectator hold three fingers in his right hand using the puppet. Raffaella then picked up the puppet by the neck and held it in a standing position and made the spectator do the same. He then moved the puppet one step forward and the spectator also took one step forward. For the finale of the performance, Raffaella made the spectator bow to the audience using the puppet. Spoiler alert! If you accidentally clicked on this video and don't want to know how such tricks work, I will give you 5 seconds to click off this video but if you consider magic as a puzzle then stay tuned. Now without further ado, let's get down to how this trick works. We will break the trick into two phases. In the first phase, we will discuss how Raffaella made the spectator supposedly feel invisible touches on his body by appearing to simply point to his body without touching it. In the second phase of the routine we will discuss how Raffaella was able to control the spectator with the puppet. Now let's start with what happened in the first phase of the routine. In the first phase of the routine, there were a total of 10 invisible touches that Raffaella did onto the spectator. We will go through all 10 invisible touches quickly and learn how easy it is to perform. But before we do, let's see what Penn had to say about the performance. It's what's called in, uh, in, in magic speak, a PK touch routine, but you weren't doing it the way it's normally done. You can see that Penn mentioned his performance to be PK touch routine that wasn't performed in a traditional way. Well, if you're new to mentalism or magic, PK touch routine or invisible touch routine, when performed normally or traditionally requires two spectators in which one spectator is asked to close his or her eyes, and upon touching the second spectator, the first spectator apparently also happens to feel the touch. Now before we discuss how Raffaella did his variation of the PK touch routine, let's briefly go over how the traditional way of PK touch or invisible touch is done on a spectator. So basically a concept of dual reality is involved in PK touch routines, which means that there are two realities that coexist at the same time. The first being what the spectator with the eyes closed experiences, and the second being what the second spectator and the audience observe. You see there is actually a time delay as to when the first spectator with the eyes closed feels the touch, when compared to when the second spectator with his or her eyes open feels the touch. In simpler words, the magician or mentalist actually touches the spectator with the eyes closed before he touches the second spectator. So to the audience, it appears as if the first spectator with the eyes closed happened to feel the invisible touch in real time, when in fact, the first spectator had been touched secretly in a clever way, hidden from the audience, before the second spectator is touched openly in front of the audience. Now that you understand how a traditional PK touch or invisible touch works, you will now easily understand how Raffaella did his variation on the PK touch routine. Let's discuss all 10 of the invisible touches that Raffaella did by quickly pointing out all the clever and sneaky techniques that Raffaella used, that were hidden in plain sight from the audience. In the first invisible touch, 
he made the spectator's left arm rise up. Well if you slow down the video and look close enough, he actually lightly touches the back of his index and middle finger against the spectator's bare arm and then to misdirect the audience, he gestures with his right hand upwards as if it was his right hand that touched the spectator's body, when in fact, it was the fingers of his left hand that secretly did the work for him. For the second invisible touch, you will notice that this invisible touch is a lot more obvious than the first one. This is because you can clearly see his right hand tap the front of his shirt, right at this moment, notice the front of the shirt also move. Rafaela then continues to do the fake, misdirecting gesture as if it's his right hand that did the invisible touch on the spectator's body without physically touching him. The third invisible touch was done in a very clever way. This is because he actually used his body as a cover, so basically, when he was moving towards the left side of the spectator, he actually touched the spectator near his elbow right at this moment here, with the back of his index finger and then continued to fake gesture and misdirect the audience as if he had once again magically touched the spectator's knees, when in reality, it had nothing to do with the knees of the spectator. In the fourth PK touch, he did the same method that he used in the second PK touch. For the fifth PK touch, he once again used a clever technique, in which he quickly flipped the back of the spectator's shirt with his index finger, while following the flow of the motion of his arm. Which you can notice very clearly in this slowed down clip. For the sixth PK touch, there was a slight delay in which the spectator raised his arm. This is because Rafaela touched the spectator much lightly. As a result, due to a very light and visible touch, the spectator took a slightly longer time period to register that sneaky touch as a physical touch. For the seventh PK touch, due to the sudden camera angle change, the editors of the show trimmed out the portion where he lightly touched the spectator but since you understand the basic principle of how he was executing this trick, it is now self-explanatory of how he did the touch. The eighth and the ninth invisible touch method, is similar to the earlier seven methods I discussed. And finally, for the tenth PK touch in which he apparently makes the spectator raise both of his arms, is in fact, actually an editing done by the producers of the show. In order to support my argument, you can notice that right after the ninth PK touch, the camera is cut towards Penn's face. During this time period, Rafaela actually used both of his index fingers and flicked them upwards while touching the back of the spectator's shirt near the shoulder. As a result, the spectator felt a touch on his left and right side, so he raised both of his arms. Now let's discuss the second phase of the performance which is exactly the reason why you clicked on this video in the first place. In the second phase, Rafaela apparently controlled the spectator with his puppet. Now before we discuss how Rafaela did this impossible phase, let's see what Penn had to say about his performance. Is it all done with bone conduction? You can see Penn mentioned about the term bone conduction. Well you see, there are two pathways in which sound can be heard by the human ear. The first is air conduction and the second is bone conduction. I will now do a brief overview of both of these pathways individually. In air conduction, sound vibrations are carried from the external ear through the ear canal to the cochlea and up towards the cortex for processing. This method is basically used by our ear naturally. The second medium is bone conduction, in which a vibrating body is placed on the temporal bone, the frontal bone, the back of the skull or anywhere near the bone on a human body, such that, it has enough vibration to reach the cochlea and the inner ear, so upon vibration of the cochlea, the signal is sent to the cerebral cortex for processing. Now that you understand what Penn was referring to which was the term bone conduction, let's discuss how exactly this was useful to Raphaela's performance, and at the same time how this hint is helpful for us, to understand how exactly Raphaela pulled off an impossible illusion. If you have made it this far into the video, be sure to hit the like button, it really supports the channel. Also be sure to subscribe, I would really appreciate it, due to the time and effort I put into my videos. If you want to see more and more uploads, please support me on Patreon for a single dollar per month. I would really appreciate it wholeheartedly. Now let's get back to the explanation. Before I explain the most logical method as to how Rafaela performed this illusion, I want you to take note of these three key moments, that will be able to help us in drawing a logical conclusion. The first key moment, 
I want you to take note of is how Raphaela did not allow the spectator to wear the mask himself, rather, he instantly pulled the mask back, when the spectator said he was going to wear the mask, and then put the mask onto the spectator himself. This beautiful mask, do you like it? Yeah. Okay, I, I help you. The second key moment, is right after he put the mask onto the spectator. He specifically asked the spectator to not move. Okay, don't, don't, don't move now. Hmm? Relax, okay. The third and final key moment, I want you to take note of is when Raffaella raised the puppet onto its feet. Due to its weight, the puppet twisted slightly. Upon twisting, something fishy was spotted right below the neck of the puppet. Right here at this moment. You see, Raffaella actually had attached bone conduction headphones to the elastic of the mask that he put onto the spectator. Since I explained earlier how bone conduction works, you can easily understand the purpose of bone conduction headphones. Bone conduction headphones are headphones that do not need to be inserted into the ear rather can be placed anywhere on the skull. Now you may be wondering how exactly is that possible? since Teller immediately went to examine the mask right after the performance. Did we examine the mask? Yeah, yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah. And the earplugs too. Well, you see, I pointed out three key moments earlier, out of which, the first two will support my argument as to how he hid the bone conduction headphones. You see the moment he placed the mask onto the spectator, the bone conduction headphones were attached to the elastic and were positioned right at the center of the back of the spectator's skull. The bone conduction headphones that were attached to the elastic were also removable. So before he asked the spectator to go back to his seat, he actually quickly removed the bone conduction headphones from the elastic of the mask. This also further supports my argument because if the spectator had turned around at a slight angle, he could have flashed the bone conduction headphones that were attached to the back of his skull with the elastic of the mask. And finally, you may be wondering how exactly the commands were being given to the spectator. Well, you see, the puppet is no ordinary puppet, rather, the puppet acted as a transmitter. To support my argument, I pointed out the third key moment earlier, in which there was a fishy object pointing out right near the base of the puppet's neck. This was actually a transmitter for the bone conduction headphones that were placed behind the spectator's skull. The transmitter was controlled by buttons, which were inside the neck of the puppet. Raffaella simply had to push the buttons one by one, which transmitted the command to the spectator. Another important point I want you to take note of, is that he asked the spectator to push in earplugs inside his ear, as a result, the earplugs actually helped him hear the commands from the bone conduction headphones, much easier, since all external noise was reduced to the minimum. So the conduction of the bone amplified, making it audible for his brain to understand each of the commands he was being given through the vibration of the cochlea. If you liked what you saw be sure to hit the like button and feel free to comment which reveal you want to see next. Thanks for watching and as always have a great day.